Okay, so this is a 3D perspective view. The view is quite narrow at first, but that's representative of, um, I think it's a 35 millimeter camera, which is also representative of the human eye. If you want to get a bit more in the frame, you can pull out a little, but be warned that as you pull out, you're almost getting a fisheye approach to the camera so the further you come out the more distorted that will be. I can change the look of it um, to at the moment it's hidden line if I change it to realistic it should take a second to have a think about it and then I get the rendered finish so that was in here visual styles now be warned ray trace that's new to 2013 if you're working on anything less than a supercomputer I wouldn't have that on what that is looking at every reflection every shadow every light and trying to work it out live so um, the best I tend to leave it on is realistic view okay so camera views that has just appeared now under here as a 3D view 1 I could change that to say 3D front of building and I'll usually put something like viz for visualization in the name so I know it's not one of my um, standard orthogonal views so if I don't like it exactly what a quite a nice thing to do is inside the 3D view you can actually press the shift and orbit around objects just to tweak what the view is looking at so if I didn't have that selected I'd be I'd be orbiting around the center of the model but if I have an object selected you can see I'm now orbiting around that object so you can make tweaks and moves of course if by doing this I'm changing the eye level uh, so that's original head height which is referred to over here sorry that's not the head height that's the height of that window other things within the 3d view to keep an eye on so that's the eye level I was I was trying to find there target level and eye level so you can make changes here if you wanted to say I wanted it at five meters I can jump up there um, what you cannot do is zoom in and out you're not going to change where the camera is you're just zooming in and out on that frame so that can be quite tricky um, if you need to get to the camera again go back to level zero you'll notice that the camera isn't showing so how are you going to change where the camera is find the camera listed in your 3d views right click on it and say show camera and now you can click and drag and move it and click off when you're happy and that will have changed the visualization okay other than that within this view choosing far clip this this can affect your model quite dramatically in the vis visualization of your model if you've got a very large model environment you might not want to render everything within it um, again you can have the section box so you can start chopping into your model if you want to render it that way but quite often people find that elements within their model if it's a large model are dis they can't see them and they panic that's usually to do with the far clip uh, far clipping is the the back wall of what you're looking at and if I change this to something quite close like 15 meters let's just see whether that works for me you can see anything beyond 15 meters away from the camera is hidden so I'm only seeing the very front corner of the building so if I want that off I can untick it and that turns that off but it's actually quite nice to have it on but set to past your model so keeping an eye on how far the camera is away from what you're looking at is quite important change that back to 50 meters and that should be fine okay so last but not least is rendering um, I change my 
eye height down to three and a half. So I've got my back in and I'm going to bring my frame right the way down. So rendering isn't brilliant in Revit, I'll be honest. If you're going to get into rendering properly, um, I would suggest getting 3D Max and doing a live link between your Revit model and your 3D Max model and then using the rendering engine within 3D Max which is a bit better but for now rendering um, look down on the bottom bar there's a teapot with a light bulb if you click on that you get the rendering interface um, you can also go to the top bar here and that opens the same window now settings draft is very quick but very pixely you can the screen resolution depends on what machine you're working on you could change that to the printer and change its DPI dots per square inch um, even though we're working in metric that still seems to be the way people refer to the number of pixels within a square inch um, so be be aware that the higher you set these values the longer it takes to render and quite dramatically sometimes the difference between five minutes and ten hours depending on how much RAM your machine has got and how um, many gigabytes of memory it's got the lighting scheme uh, if you've got lights in your project those are called artificial so you could have the Sun only Sun and artificial artificial only for a nighttime shot um, exterior and interior um, the interior ones they add a few more photons and make it a little bit brighter and change some of the um, characteristics of the view uh, just to make it so it's refining it a little bit but um, the the point is if you have lights in your model and you turn them on in the render the render engine has to think about those lights and how those photons are bouncing around your model so it again takes longer sun settings you can change where the uh, shadows are coming from if I just close this down for a second and turn on shadows there's a shadow there if I go back into the render environment and go to my sun settings I could change that angle to say something like 200 it takes a bit of experimenting this I'll change it back actually to 120 and you'll see beneath here that my or zero let's see what happens there coming straight towards us so it's relative to the view or you can turn it off and it's relevant to the environment then so say 150 apply that and see where that goes so you have to do a bit of playing around okay um, sky you, this is quite nice I actually prefer sky cloudy because it's a nicer background so hazy do you want it to fog out into the distance or do you want crystal clarity that's quite a good way of focusing the eye on the object at front and leaving the background to haze out a little bit so weight of information within the image okay I'm not going to hit render now um, but feel free to play around with those options but be aware it does take quite a long time um, one way of getting around that time issue can be render in cloud again this is new to the more recent uh, versions of Revit sign up to Autodesk 360 so I'll sign up to Autodesk first uh, it's free sign up to Autodesk 360 it's free if you're a student and hit render in cloud now what you're doing there is taking the power of um, the render away from your hard drive and away from your graphics card essentially sending the information online to Autodesk um, who then render it in one of their um, server farms and then email you back a JPEG of the rendering about five minutes later it's absolutely fantastic please experiment with it it really does speed up the process a lot and it means you can carry on working uh, rather than your machine just going dead while it's rendering so okay um, that's enough for this section uh, thank you very much please find the next video